94.9 The Rock, GTA's rock station, Bob Willette. On the phone joining me is Matt Schultz from Cage the Elephant. Uh, how you doing, Matt? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm excellent, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time today. Social Cues comes out April 19th. The first single is Ready to Let Go, and we're playing the heck out of it here already. Congratulations. I've had the opportunity to hear the album. It's really terrific. Uh, thank you. Um, it's, but, you know, I will say this. Like, Ready to Let Go especially, I know you directed the video. Um, it comes from a really vulnerable place, and it's a, it's a pretty powerful track. How did you uh, find putting I'm putting yourself out there in such a raw manner? Um, I think that um, uh, to a fair degree, we've always kind of done that. Yep. Um, the past year was riddled with a little more adversity than some recent years, and um, quite a bit of loss as far as family and friends and. Um, and also uh, yeah, a, a failed relationship. And so I think just going through some pretty hard stuff um, uncovered some pretty real material, I, I guess. Yeah, well, it's it, it's it's powerful and it uh, it resonates, man. It's 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 very powerful. This is the fifth Cage the Elephant album. Uh, I always like to ask artists who write and perform you know, you have your whole life to write that first album, they always say, right? You know, you got that, you know, what, uh, and then the pressure comes. How has your process changed as a writer over the course of those five albums? Mm, maybe, uh, hopefully it's become more refined and uh, focused. Certainly one thing that we've zeroed in on and, and found to be very important within the process is to be intentional. Um, there's a fair amount uh, of the process, it's also practical. Uh, I think a lot of people get lost up, get lost in the, the mystical side of things, or at least what seems to be mystical and mysterious. But there is a practical side to it. Writing some of my favorite writers um, were great uh, narrative-based writers, such as Bob Dylan, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, um, uh, and so I really stepped, we stepped that that kind of approach. Um, and then I think, uh, also uh, to, to speak more to the intentionality, just knowing what you, what you want, what you want to get out of it and taking the time to, um, uh, fully realize that and also bring it to life. Well, that's an interesting statement. So you, I mean, I guess the question then for me is like, what do you want to get out of it? What, when you sit down to write, uh, social cues, what do you, what, what's your ultimate goal? I think that um, more often than not, when you first sit down and you're writing, perhaps that thought's not quite present. Okay. Uh, very much in, in like the same mind frame as painting, you have the obsessive hand and the decisive hand. Yep. And so, you know, you create a space where you have the freedom to Im improvise and when something special starts happening and it provokes a feeling or a thought within yourself and you're able to have that cathartic moment. Then, you know, to, to, uh, to further on that idea, knowing that music is a communal experience or, or mostly important, I think, in the communal space. And so then you want that uh, to speak and to reach and hopefully give other people an opportunity to, um, to have a moment with it. That's a great analogy, the painting analogy. And... You know, throw on top of that, you talk about that becoming a communal thing. You've got the dynamic of working with your brother through all this. So that's got to bring its own set of, obviously, it's going to bring its own set of, uh, of, of like, positive influences. But it's got to come with challenges as well. Yeah, I think, um, I think that similarly with the other members, we all have very strong personalities. Um you know, one of the unfortunate things about being a human being is <laughs> only being able to experience life in your own in your own skin and so get locked into our own perspective. But I think over the years working with each other you learn to trust each other more and, and you definitely learn uh, to be better communicators. I think when you're younger a lot of your disputes happen because of an inability to communicate properly. So um, 
but it is it does have challenges. I think that there's more benefit than there is. Um, and it is a challenge, though. Sure, sure, of course. Uh, do you remember the first time you heard your song on the radio, or like, is there a moment that you're like, "Wow, man, we made it"? Um, no, I haven't had that moment. <laughs> um, but definitely, uh, I do remember the first time we heard ourselves on the radio. It was pretty funny. I think we were like, I feel like we were in Scotland somewhere. Yeah. And we pulled off to grab a bite at like a Burger King, and the song came out. I was like, "Oh my god, that's <laughs> us!" And I said that to the um, to the cashier, and she's like, "Okay, cool. So, do you want to speak this <laughs> up?" Not impressed at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because you know radio has cha- even just you know it, since you're since 2008 since you got you know the ele- you know, guys been at it ten ele- well a little longer than that obviously but you know radio's been playing you for ten years now eleven years now uh, like the landscape has changed so much technology has changed how people engage with music has that changed your approach as a band to how you uh, how, like how you work because let's face it it's work it, how do you how do you work a new album has that changed for you guys. Um, certainly. I think it's empowered, I think it's definitely empowered a lot of uh, creatives who make make creative works for a living, Um, which uh, it's given you the ability to um, have more of a direct communication with your audience as well as to shape kind of the visual narrative of um of the music mm. um especially as far as social media and things of course so yeah it definitely has changed i think it's happened so quickly quickly that a lot of it's not re- readily available to talk about um because i guess it's it feels so lived in. It's very fluid, that's for sure. I mean, broadcast and media and new media and all these things and and music and and music making has cha- has changed so ra- so rapidly. Uh, and can and in that Canada loves Cage the Elephant. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but we love Canada. Canada, <laughs> seriously, yeah. you guys broke here early and hard and have had nothing but hits, man. Well, we really appreciate it. <laughs> um, I think our first two was actually in Canada. Yeah, we um. Uh, our, we'd only had a publishing deal. Oh, cool. And the Queens of the Stone Age thought that we were um, Canadian because it was a Canadian publishing company. And so they, they were like, we need to take out some locals. <laughs> they took us on tour, and that was our first tour. That's hilarious. That's got to go in a book someday. We got on our first tour by pretending to be Canadian. <laughs> well, well, we didn't exactly pretend. <laughs> I know we you did. I didn't announce that we weren't. I know. I was just being, just being, just being facetious. <laughs> um, so, uh, speaking of touring, a uh, big tour with Beck this summer. Beck's on the album. What's your relationship with Beck? How'd that happen? Um, we had met Beck at an, a, a show in L.A., um, which was brief but really nice. And then um, David Campbell, who's Beck's father, did a most of the arrangements on the record, and so I guess he was at the forefront of her mind, and we'd been working on Night Running and had a really nice course going on, but um, we just kind of stumped as far as coming up with a approach for the verses, and Brad was sitting, we were sitting around talking about what we could do, and one day Brad was like, I feel like Beck would know, <laughs> so we... Um, so we sent it off to Beck. Um, he was in Asia at the time, and I think within like two days, he sent back like some incredible options, and he said he had backups, and I uh, just was really impressed with how talented um, that guy is. That's amazing. That's a great story. Uh, the album is Social Cues. It comes out on April nineteenth, and uh, the new al- the new video is amazing for Ready to Go, Ready to Let Go. We are ha- so happy to play it and uh, and support you guys. And we're really we're really uh, really happy to have you on our airwaves, Matt Schultz of KG Elephant. Thanks for taking the time with ninety four nine The Rock, thanks. man. Yeah, I really appreciate all the support. We we always have, and um, try not to take it for granted. So that's I good, man. You guys.